Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Hello, Belinda. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? So lovely to see everyone. Thank you for joining us, folks. Uh, new and familiar. Um, Eve, welcome. Linda, Teresa, Karen, Pre, great to see you. Um, I'm super excited today. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, I, I, I'm just feeling um, a tremendous amount of just joy. And, you know, I think part of it is I shared it in this week's email, this quote from Tristan Gooley, who wrote this book around noticing nature. And the quote begins, new actions inevitably lead to new experiences. And this novelty kicks our senses out of the slump induced by routine. This in turn raises our levels of awareness. And, you know, I think that's what these gratitude circles have really done is that they've created a new experience and then kicked our senses out of the sort of normal slump uh, that can easily happen in routines. And that's one of the challenges, right? Because we, in some ways, are asking people to create a habit of gratitude, yet at the same time, not make it so routine that, you know, your blinders kind of come on. So uh, just as we get started, um, we're going to do a quick check-in. Um, and just to be clear this time, we're going to put up a poll about what your inner weather report. So this is not your literal um, weather report for what's happening in around you, but just internally, what's your weather report? You know, is it sunny and bright, sunny and partly cloudy, a little foggy, maybe stormy? Or if there's another word um, or pair of words that uh, you might describe your inner weather report, feel free to share that in the chat as well. And the weather around you might actually affect your personal weather report as well. So <laughs> curious how that's connected. This is about being based in nature. So <laughs> absolutely interconnected. All right. And so what do we say? We got some, a mix from stormy to sunny and bright. Thank you. So as we uh, continue, uh, we only have two rules in the gratitude circle. One is that your inner teacher is your best guide and there's no fixing, saving or advising of others. And when we do this, we give ourselves really the opportunity to express outwardly what we might be experiencing inwardly. And then we are witnessing and by witnessing what other people are expressing inwardly, we're really creating uh, a new um, um, kind of community. Um, and we break out of the slump of routines. Feeling good? Mm. Yeah. So. Well, I'm excited to um, drop us into um, a little bit of a grounding ritual as we always do. and. And um, just to add on to what Omar shared, you know, this is really a space for us to co-create and, and make it our own as well. So really just tap into, you know, how you're feeling today and how your inner voice wants to be expressed. So again, it's an encouragement to, you know, use the chat if you're feeling like you want to express in more of a written form or um, use your voice if that's something that feels like is really resonating today or, or just um, being an observer is also a beautiful way to participate as well. So just wanted to share that as a way to connect us into ourselves and with the circle. Yeah. So before Belinda jumps into kicking us off with the meditation, particularly for those who are new, the flow is we'll take a moment uh, to really kind of settle in through um, our breathing, opening us up to really uh, spaciousness to become aware of whatever uh, is arising. And then we will pull the 
gratitude blooming prompts, which are really based on nature and sort of expressed through the lens of an artist and through sort of that art and through that nature and through sort of the synchronicity of a prompt, uh, we're given opportunity to reflect for a few moments. Uh, and then we will close with um, a gratitude exercise and uh, our appreciations. So cool. Thank you. Thanks, Omar. And uh, what I, one thing I wanted to share to inspire the meditation today is that we are actually just crossed the midpoint between winter and spring. So, you know, that energy that you might be feeling right now internally is, is this emergence of spring and the longer days. So um, be curious if, if y'all have noticed the shift for yourselves uh, this week, but we're definitely in that, going in that direction of the spring bloom. This is why I love always calling Belinda because I'm like, I'm feeling this. And then she'll immediately tell me what the moon is doing. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, okay then. All right. Brian's feeling the shift. And again, the chat is an opportunity for us to use this as our shared journal. All right. So today we're going to start a little bit more outward before we tune inward. So I want everyone to um, just uh, make contact with your hands today and um, if it's helpful, you can even um, rub your hands to just bring some energy uh, into your system. And as you're um, kind of making contact with your hands, just imagine the energy of the earth um, being catalyzed through your palms. And what we'll do is we're gonna place our hands somewhere in our body that really needs some extra connection today. So just take a moment to feel the warmth of the energy in between your palms and also just connect in with your body to a place that needs some extra energy and attention during this time. And just place your palms there. So for me, I feel my heart and my belly might need a little extra energy. So I'm gonna put my palms there. Just take a minute to really arrive in this physical space with this beautiful circle. And make contact between your palms and somewhere in your body that needs that extra nourishment today. And we're going to breathe in energy from the earth. And breathing out anything that we want to loosen or relax into and let go of today. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. This next round of breath, really pay attention to the contact of your palms with that part of you. And just imagining that part of you relaxing, softening, releasing. Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. 
Focusing on that place where your hands are making contact. Imagining a seed starting to come alive in that place. And as you breathe, imagine that seed slowly starting to grow. with your breath as the fertilizer. Breathing in nutrients, releasing any toxins from the soil. Imagining with the days going into more light and more sun as we head into spring. Imagining that seed sprouting out slowly and becoming stronger and stronger with your breath. Noticing the green of the stem and the leaves as they grow out from your body. Representing your own vitality and your own light growing more radiant. Breathing in. Releasing out. And just really allowing yourself to feel that energy of growth as you expand. Expanding your leaves, expanding your roots. Feeling the alignment of your body with the soil, and the energy of the sun up above. Noticing how tall you feel like growing today. You want to, do you feel like staying closer to the ground or more expanded out to the sky? Breathing in, breathing out. And as you extend, imagine yourself budding into a flower, a fruit, it could be a vegetable, imagining what expansion and blossoming feels like to you in this moment. Nourishing yourself with your breath and your attention on your own growth. Imagining this circle as a thriving, beautiful garden. So many diverse plants. Honoring our uniqueness and our beauty. Breathing in, breathing out.
I'm just noticing how it feels to be that thriving plant full of life and light and vitality. And also embracing any discomfort that you may be feeling from even that process of noticing and growing. Breathing in. Breathing out. Enjoying that connection that you feel within you and the earth. And also the connection of being together, cultivating this wild garden of the circle. Doing a couple final breaths to feel our connection with ourselves and each other. And when you feel ready, allow yourself to release your plant back into the earth as a reminder of your own strength and vitality. And gradually take the time to transition from this place to this present moment of the circle. Gratitude for our breath and our vitality in this space. That was beautiful, Belinda. Thank you. So in this uh, next part of the gratitude circle, we're uh, going to have a volunteer um, pull a, one of the gratitude blooming cards. And it's an opportunity for us to just use the prompt or the illustration uh, to really uh, just reflect for a moment, whatever is in this present moment. Anybody want to volunteer to go first? Oops, hold on, my view's watched. Let's, uh, Trisha, I see your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, always to choose. I always, I love this. Mm. Let's see, I know I should give someone else a chance to go first. Oh, they'll, they'll get you, they'll get the idea. Keep going, darling. Hold on. Let's see. Okay, let's go to the, my left. The other two. Over. Yeah, left, left, left. One more. Boom. That one. Just felt being on the left side. Now I've had this one too before. <laughs> the dot. We, we, I think you pulled it, Omar. The dog tooth violet, curious. Is it curiosity? Yes. Try being curious about something that feels uncomfortable to you. How can curiosity shed a light of understanding on something you fear? Pain. And still struggling with the physical discomfort and uh, growing into it. 
spoke to several of my physicians today and and uh, they said, you sound much more clear. And it's all, you know, Zoom meetings and things, virtual visits. So uh, yeah, just getting uncomfortable in self and curious to see what the next chapter brings. And I love yellow. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? And feel free to either physically raise your hand or use one of the emojis. Um, if this dog tooth violet spark something within yourself. Well, I'm happy to go. Um, I was recently asked this question of what are your listening modalities? And I just loved uh, that question and really paying more attention to how am I listening? And when I look at this dog tooth violet and I see the two um, leaves opening up, that's what I'm sort of imagining is like to listen needs to sort of open up. And um, every day I, I do, my Qigong exercise in my backyard. And in the last couple of days, I really noticed these daffodils. And at first I was like, oh, like one. And then, oh, there's two. And like, oh, there's four. And, and today it was a little overcast. And I noticed that none of them were open. And so I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So they really only open with the sun. And so what does it mean to be open? And what is the sun in my life that's going to make me open um, so that I, you know, so I can, my, my flower can kind of appear. Um, and so I was just really trying to pay more attention to how I'm listening and, and, and the ways that I listen. And I think the gratitude circles is certainly one way in which the sun rises for me. Thank you. Can I piggyback on yours? Please. Okay. Um, I loved how you framed it because I was getting kind of stuck in what, what am I curious about that is tied into fear. But once you start talking about the listening modalities, I look more closely at the flower and I see all the different dimensions of it and the diversity of um, listening modalities and the aesthetic of these um, beautiful cards, the illustrations. Have you listening or have me listening with my eyes almost as much as my ears and um, that sparks curiosity um, in the unspoken language. So. Thank you. Um, something that came up for me in the meditation was, um, you know, how the body can be such a hub of intelligence around like how I'm feeling emotionally or, um, and recently I've just been more kind of paying attention to areas within my physical body that are feeling more contracted during this time. And, um, you know, I noticed that my normal reaction is to be like, oh, you should be doing more yoga or you're not moving enough. And, you know, so there's a little bit of this like inner gremlin that's like judging the, the discomfort, the physical discomfort. And um, 
in the meditation, I found myself just trying to um, just be with the tension that's in my body. And I feel like that tension is also like a metaphor for like the tension that I'm feeling in my life right now and in, in other ways. And it was interesting just like noticing the tension and not trying to fix it, not trying to have it go away, but just being with it. And um, kind of makes me think of this, this theme around just like being curious about the thing. And sometimes, and it's making me realize that curiosity kind of allows me to be more open to like the harder things. And it's interesting that the prompt talks about fear because I, I find myself wanting to like shy away from fear or hide the feeling of fear versus being um, present with it. So it's interesting what even that subtle shift of perspective can, can create more openness like those leaves. <laughs> I, I think for me, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I think for me was um, the sentence that said, try being curious about something that feels uncomfortable to you. And I think now with um, the pandemic that we're going through and I'm hearing more of people that I know personally have been affected with this virus and, and that have died. And so you start you know, you start worrying, you know, you don't know when your time comes. So it's something that, um, that I think everybody thinks about. And um, I read something this week that said, um, try getting comfortable with not knowing. And that really spoke to me because I thought, yeah, you know, instead of trying to say, you know, get things in order or, wonder when this will happen to you um that spoke a lot to me so i have been trying to get comfortable with not knowing and not envisioning or asking questions or wondering because we really have no control on that so for me try being curious about something that feels uncomfortable to you um, reminded me of what i what i heard about try being be, try becoming comfortable with not knowing. Thank you. For those that are new, we'll also let you know that we have uh, an additional participant, which is silence. And so uh, you may hear extended pauses um, and just sometimes that can be comfortable and sometimes that can be uncomfortable and just it's an invitation to uh, to listen to that. Karen wrote, uh, there's a beautiful song by Rebecca Folsom wonder in which she says, why worry when you can wonder? <laughs> Anybody else want to share on this card? by invitation so it's all good if just listening is where you're at um well nobody else has one for this one uh anybody interested in pulling another card it's always so interesting the combination of uh themes that show up for us collectively You can also chat the row or the that we should uh, land on. If that's easier. Anyone wants to do that? Uh, 
All right. Well, I'm happy to go. Um, oh, Karen, are you leaning forward? Is it? Did you want to do it? Teresa, so you unmute. Uh, Dude, I yeah. will pick one. All right. Yeah. Uh huh. I'll pick one. Um, I'm not sure. Let's go to the very end on the right hand side. And the last card on that side. Mm. <laughs> it's the is it Pasque or Pasque flower. I've never heard of this. <laughs> uh, destiny. Notice what makes you come alive and what is something you feel called to do. Mm. Um, I know what that is. <laughs> um, I consider myself a wannabe artist again. Somehow now during the pandemic, I have stopped doing the artwork and it's a big void for me. And so I'm beginning to realize how much of a void it is. So yeah, that, that works for me, that card. Mm -hmm. Brian, can you zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole card? There we go, thank you. The synchronicity of curiosity preceding destiny is really interesting because it also can make you feel like curiosity is the pathway to get you to a destiny. Um, and it's that whole concept of the journey is more important than the destination. Um, so I really love that the two of them together, but that the curiosity inspires destiny. Thank you. Trisha, did I see you raise your hand? No. Okay. Eve? Nope. Uh, yes. Hi, this is Eve. Um, I used to work uh, helping um, people. I used to work for an attorney and I loved it before I got sick. Um, and I think I, I want to get back to that. I really really enjoyed it and um, got very passionate about doing it and I make just I think my attitude uh, helps a lot and um, I, I just, like that's something I want to get back once I get well so I, I look I'm really looking forward to do that again so I see that that's my destiny Thank you. Michelle? Hi. <laughs> um, for me, uh, children is um, what I'm called to do, work with children. I'm a Head Start teacher. Um, currently not working today, <laughs> but um, I feel like uh, any thing with children you know it makes me come alive whatever I'm doing I feel I feel younger even though I'm older <laughs> and um, I just have a, such a passion for it and um, I've through this pandemic time I've also um, written my first children's book which has been on my bucket list to do uh, so um, and I just received a letter from my dad today which reminded me um, when he was saying how I was truly put on this earth um, for a special purpose in the lives of children. I mean, he was congratulating me with completing my book, which is almost done. But um, so I think in any aspect, you know, of um, touching the lives of children in any way that I can, um, that gives me joy. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Michelle. It's good to see you. <laughs> Pre, did I see you have your hand up? Hi. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I felt this like new kind of inspiration um, and motivation to to like. I honestly like. I feel addicted to writing, um, which I've always loved and. Um, but I, I've never felt, I feel like the drive to, and the, all the ideas are just like bursting and there's like that, that flow that was always missing before. And this is the first time since, um, you know, like it's been, I think the last time I was this inspired and writing full-time was high school. So it's so nice to be able to do that again. And sometimes I'm like, okay, I should probably be working now instead of <laughs> writing what I'm writing, but I, I feel connected to my readers and I can tell that they feel connected to me and that feels really nice to be able to share your message. And um, I guess like for me, writing is my way of showing up and so, and being vulnerable. And so it's nice um, to help people feel like they're not alone the way you guys do um, here every Thursday. So um, I'll go. Uh, I, I've, I've <laughs> ever since last week um, when we started really focusing as much on the image as the words. I've really I've started looking at these cards very differently, and this one I see a spider on a web, and I just think about what it means to be on a web and to know that we're all kind of interconnected. And I, I did a bunch of writing last year and I remember there was this sort of one piece that I was writing about, which was what happens when we trust that we can pluck the web so much so that we might fall off. And in the writing, I just kind of realized that we are actually the thread. And so you can't actually fall off the web. And so it was just kind of like this beautiful realization that we're not actually stuck to the web, uh, but we can actually jump from it and the thread will follow us and create a new web. And I kind of feel like that's what destiny offers us. That's such a beautiful image. It reminds me of Charlotte's Web. <laughs> but Omar, that, that I love that. That thank you. One thing that um, Karen, you shared that came up for me um, personally around the curiosity and the destiny themes were how, you know, some, I think that word destiny can sometimes feel really like, like deterministic, like, oh, there's a end point, you know, that we have to go to. And something that's been fun about this prompt about noticing what you know, I feel called to do or what makes me come alive is um, like, it's almost like a, sca I feel like seeing life more like a scavenger hunt where you're just like picking up the breadcrumbs and maybe there's like a, but, but a few different breadcrumbs and you're picking, you're deciding which one you want to pick at, at, you know, different points in your life. And, and it's like the curiosity around the breadcrumbs that I, for me has kind of released the pressure of like, being worried, like, am I doing the thing that I'm here to meant to do? Am I living my purpose? You know, like sometimes those questions feel really charged and, and kind of like a lot of responsibility. And um, it's been really nice to see it more like, a, you know, just a, like a scavenger hunt and, and just following the clues and, and noticing how it feels when you get each clue. <laughs> like sometimes it's like, oh, yay, it's delightful. Other times it feels a little, you know, more daunting, but 
Um, yeah, and I love that the idea of it being also like a, a weaving of a web or, you know, as they're picking up each thread. Trisha, did you have your hand, please? Are you finished, darling? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just, um, uh, fo touching off, following up, um, destiny. Some, you know, some say destiny's already set forth, but then we create our own destiny. And um, like, like you said, Belinda, I've, I've worn many hats throughout my life so far and I continue to switch them and the shoes and uh, it's been wonderful it's, and it's slowing down through this time of pandemic all this crisis that's going on that it's given me chance to breathe and to uh, to be able to get into artwork and take more classes and explore more personal things than what someone else is saying, you should try this, you should do that. But it's just something I want to try, I want to do. So yes, and change hats too. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. That, it's a wonderful flower and definitely a spider. I see the spider, but I also see more of a, a beautiful, is it a lily type flower? Is the Pasquet flower a lily type flower? I think it would be worthwhile to explore that plant yeah. more. <laughs> it is definitely a post-gratitude circle activity. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. Cheers. Thank you. Michelle, you're on mute. Sorry. Um, I loved the thinking about the scavenger hunt and the, the, the threads and the web. And I was kind of thinking of, um, you know, listening to your inner voice. Um, sometimes we don't do that. And I think uh, that's important. And then I was thinking of the threads as, kind of like your pathway through life and how you, your connectiveness with other people um, along the way. And I truly believe, oh my God, it's gotta be a part. I truly believe that we're <laughs> put on this earth, you know, to learn lessons. So it's, you know, what lessons are you learning, you know, at this point in your life um, with what path you're on? Sorry, she's gotta be a part of that. <laughs> but I just wanted to add that, thank you. Thank you. Pretty shared in the chat. Uh, the flower has a wildness to it that I love. So many opportunities, so many chances, so many possibilities. Thank you. Anybody else want to share on this card um, before picking one more? I think we have we have time for one more. So, any takers? This is the easy part. <laughs> I'm always so curious what the last card is going to be because it kind of connects everything together. It's the, it's the trifecta. All right, well, I'm happy to go. Um, I won't be shy. All right, I'm going row two and all. Uh, well, I had the number seven in my head, so I don't know what to do with that since there's only six. We'll just go uh, maybe third row, first one, since uh, <laughs> that would put me to the next row. So third row, first column. Ah, Poppy, remembrance. Remember someone you are thankful for. How can you honor them? Hmm. I, I, this is awesome. Uh, you know, in some ways, if with the arc of curiosity, destiny, and remembrance, I feel like that's like 
past, present, and future, sort of all of those pieces. Like curiosity is in the present, destiny sort of in the future, and remembrance is in the past. And um, I'm somebody who has spent a lot of my life moving forward. And I'm really been trying to spend more time uh, looking back. Uh, and during the meditation at the beginning, what I was imagining was a giant sequoia tree sort of just rising up. And then the sort of pine cone, I don't even know if pine cones come from sequoia trees, but that's what I was imagining. And, you know, it's dropping down and, you know, the pine cone has everything that the sequoia had and the sequoia had whatever was in, it was a pine cone and, and just the power of memory as something living um, as opposed to something gone um, and really learning to embrace and let go, embrace and let go and embrace and let go. So, thank you. Michelle. I am such an awe that this card was chosen. Um, my aunt passed away this morning and um, I've had a tough day <laughs> and, and I feel like I came on here, you know, for a reason, the last minute, you know, to come on here. And then, you know, I was um, speaking to her, hoping for a sign, you know, and I truly believe that this is a sign. It really is. Um, and, and, and she was such, such a fun, silly, playful person. So I, I'm thankful for her and I think that's how I will honor her is to still keep my, you know, sense of humor and, and her love for animals too. I mean, I kind of feel it with my dog. <laughs> she loved dogs. So um, yeah, I just, I'm glad I can, I was able to be in here and that you picked that card. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer. Hello. Yep, we can hi. hear you. Oh, hi. I had to take my earbuds out. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'll be I'll be quick. This all these three things came together so perfectly. Um, my my vision when we did the meditation, which thank you all for being here and for that beautiful meditation too was this um, like, a, like a, those, those really strong dangling roots that hang down from trees, but it was like a live vine and it wrapped around this big redwood. And what bursted out up top was beautiful flowers, but they hung down like upside down jellyfish. And in those first two pictures, I kind of saw that. <laughs> like if you flip those two flowers kind of that way. Um, so that was kind of my, my vision pattern. Um, I have no real idea what my destiny is. I know what I've done in the past, which has brought me joy. But ironically, I'm, I'm, my curiosity right now is very introspective. And I'm at a place in my life where I'm working with a few wonderful people to help me guide, guide myself through the process of uncovering kind of how I got to where I am now and that is the fear the curiosity on that but the fear of what will I find um but I'm learning that whatever I find I have to invite it in and be uncomfortable even if it's something positive if I've never felt that before and sit through that uncomfortability 
because then that will give me the strength to keep forging forward. Um, so it's kind of like being a flower, like kind of growing each little by little with the more nutrients I get from my exploration. And maybe on the other side, something will come together as a um, destiny or something I'm meant to do for however long. I have things I want to do, but I'm not sure that's where I need to be. Um, and my remembrance, the first two things that popped into my head was my my dog. Not, not this one you see on the screen, <laughs> but the dog we had, the gentle giant we had for 14 years before him, and my dad. So tonight when I get home, I'm going to do my evening meditation and see where that leads my dreams <laughs> tonight um, and probably journal on this whole great experience this evening. So thank you guys for letting me share. Thank you. It's wonderful to hear your voice, Jennifer. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm nervous. but. Um, I wanted to share something, uh, what it says, remember someone you are thankful for, how can you honor them? And this Christmas, again, I think the COVID has brought us all back to basics, at least it has for me, but um, I have four grown children, they're adults, they have their own children, but back when they were at home and, and very small, Every Christmas when we would receive Christmas cards after you displayed them, you know, whether you did by your tree or on a, a wall or whatever way, I would take them down and I would put them on the dinner table. And each night when we had um, our meal, I would pick one of the cards like we're doing here uh, that had been sent to us. And we would think of that person and remember them what we were thankful for. We'd say a prayer for him. We'd send him a blessing, positive energy. So this was many years ago. So this year for Christmas, I just felt I had to do that. So the cards that I received, I'd put them by my nightstand. And I do that for each person. Then I change the card to another one. And I've been doing that since Christmas. And it's just a really neat way of connecting with these special people in my life. So I'm glad I remembered that tradition and revived it. Thank you. Eve, would you like to go? I Yes, um, I just, um, my grandparents, um, I was raised by them, um, and they both, I saw them passed away, uh, one when I was 13, and the next one when I was 14. Um, it's been 29 years, and i very thankful for everything that they taught me, that everything that they could give me um, to raise me well, to be the person that I am. I am so grateful that I was raised by them. And um, I, I miss them so much. <laughs> um, and I, to honor them is, I follow everything, everything that they taught me to keep doing as they, you know, everything that they told me to be a good person, to obey, to be grateful for whatever you have um, every day um, is a blessing. And, and yes, it is true. Uh, it is a blessing um, because I, like I said earlier, I got sick a year ago now and I'm still getting well, but it is a blessing because I was told I was not going to be able to walk and I am walking um, and it's been hard, but it's been hard work, <laughs> but it is a blessing to be able to do again, stand up and do steps and keep going. They are my, 
my everything. Uh, uh, they give me the strength every day. I know that for sure. And to my son, you know, I have an 11 year old. Um, it's the same thing. Um, I wake up in the morning, I do my therapy because I want to get back to him. And yeah, my grandparents were my, my everything. So I'm very thankful for them. Thank you. Thank you. Any final comments? Curiosity. It's the second one. Again, remind me. Destiny. Destiny. And fear popped out of that one quite fast. <laughs> Wasn't that one? It was the, the destiny and, uh, and the poppy of uh, remembrance. Now that's full circle in life. Life is impermanent. Well, I'll be remembered one day as we fulfill our destiny and help others and reach for the stars. to shine our light for others and share our, share kindness and compassion. Cheers. Thank you. So just as we bring this gratitude circle to a close, I invite you to just kind of get settled back into your body. Um, and we're going to do three breaths. And I'm just, you can breathe at your own pace. And I'll just sort of set the intention for each breath. So the first breath in, this is acknowledging the gratitude circle that we've been in for the last hour, the words that were shared the feelings that we each had. The second breath is just where we are in this moment, right here, right now. And the third breath is what are we taking with us wherever we go? Thank you, each of you, for joining us today. Um, I'd love to just try something different. Um, we're still figuring out the closings on this. So um, if there's a word right now that's coming to you, and whether it's one of the cards or just your own word, just one word, I'd like you to put it in the chat, but don't put it in. Don't hit return yet, because I want us to all put it in, and then at the same time we'll hit return. So, so you should give it take a minute. Don't hit return. <laughs> and then uh, type. And then let's say, I think folks are still typing. All right, on three, one, two, three. Boom. All right. What do we have here? Joy, embrace, allow, love, live, equanimity, intention. Mm. Let that be some of the things that you take with you as we end our gratitude circle today. Thank you so much um, for joining us. Uh, for some new, uh, some familiar. Also, um, Today I'm rocking this new t-shirt. I don't know if you can see it, but it says like, let it grow. It's from um, uh, Kiss the Ground, which is a new board that I'm on 
uh, which is all about regenerative agriculture. So uh, buy the t-shirt, support an organization. It's 100% cotton, um, super comfortable. We put the, the link in the app. And then, you know, in part, Belinda and I are doing this for free. Um, and so, you know, our ask of you is uh, feel free to shop at Gratitude Blooming. Belinda's got an amazing set of Gratitude products. Uh, download our Gratitude app, G Thanks, um, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as we figure out how we actually create a business model around doing this work. But, uh, you know, we know that this is an important work and, and we just, and we also know that it is only going to happen in community. So we, we appreciate you uh, joining us each week. So thank you. Plug for the gratitude deck. I got mine yesterday. <laughs> Yay! Nice. It was so fun wrapping it, Karen. Oh my gosh. I loved it. <laughs> I have little pieces of um, life everywhere from the package. <laughs> they were rose petals. <laughs> and, yeah, and um, I don't know, rosemary or something. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you all. And feel thank free to you. invite people in your life to join us too next week. Love to meet. Thank you. Thank you. thank you. It's great to be with all of you. Thank you, Preet.